Welcome back to Sutra South Africa. I'm Nikki Nash as always in pr proud collaboration with Change Cars. And today I'm inside a car that all of you guys most probably know by now. This is a car that has grown and gotten this very unique name called Nogwaja by the people of South Africa. But for those that would like to know its official name, I'm inside the Isuzu 8035. So I'm going to tell you every single thing you need to know about the vehicle from the actual look of the, the car because it looks very different from a normal Isuzu. Um, in terms of the vehicle, it looks very like a normal Isuzu. And then I'll speak about the drive of the vehicle and then my overall thoughts of the vehicle and cost of ownership. So, starting with the extra look of the vehicle, I think that's the party piece. More than anything, this car's party piece is the extra look of the vehicle. So when this car was launched, I was not really a fan of it because obviously I saw it in pictures. I think I've seen it once or twice in person. Um, so I was not really a fan of it, but you know what, I've, I've completely changed my mind. Every single thing that I've tweeted or said about the AT35, I take it back. Um, this is actually a good looking vehicle. Mm -hmm. It looks good and looks very aggressive. And when you're inside where I'm driving, you're so high up. Like you are, you can tell that you, you're quite high up than a, than a normal bike here. Um, so it has this wide um, body. So it has this wide body kit, essentially. So it has this nice wheel arches on the side uh, that look that give it an, an aggressive stance in front as well when it's just sitting there parked or oh, whether, whether it's driving, you can see that those car look so aggressive. And another thing, obviously, because it sits higher because it has a different suspension compared to the V-Cross, which it, it is based on. Um, so this is based on the V-Cross, which was the top the, the top of the range I, I used, that I tested when I tested it in 2022. So in 2022, the V-Cross was the top of the range. Now this one, the AT35, is the top of the range. So it's based on the V-Cross. Um, so it looks like a V-Cross, you can tell. And the one I'm in, in the car that's in, it's in that nice orange V-Cross color. So in the front, it looks very, very aggressive. It sits quite higher. And something that stands out more than anything else on the vehicle is the wheels. So sitting on 35-inch um, BF Goodrich tires, and they look so good. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna spend 10 minutes speaking about the extra look of the vehicle because it looks so good. Even from the side profile, when the car is just sitting doing nothing, it looks so good. So that's something that's unique about the vehicle. Then you get this lovely unique um, side step as well, written AT. Uh, so it looks good. Um, the side step, there's a difference in, in terms of the actual look of the vehicle. When you move on to the back, it looks like a normal V-Cross. Um, there's not much of a difference or anything like that. Something that I wish the car did have though, as standard, was like a roller shutter. Whether it's electric or not electric, I wish it had that. But the one I'm in does not have a roller shutter at all. So when you move into the interior of the vehicle, what are the differences of this car from the V-Cross? So obviously, the only difference that you will see in terms of the interior is that on the seat, as you can see now as on the overplay videos, there is an AT35 in the front headrest and the rear headrest. And around by the gear lever, just behind the gear lever, there's a stamp there that says AT35. And essentially, that's the difference. And the carpet is on the mats here, say AT35. Compared to the V-Cross in the interior, that's the only difference. Everything else, it looks like a V-Cross, so you get a multifunctional steering wheel. You do not get a digital inf inf infotainment um, cluster. You still get an analog, um, uh, not infotainment, instrument cluster, my mistake. Not infotainment, instrument cluster. You still get an analog one. Um, moving on to the touchscreen infotainment system, you do get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And that's something I do like, so you don't have to use a cable to, to plug it in. So something that I actually don't like about this vehicle is the fact that Although it's a 2022-2023 vehicle, um, I don't turn 23 vehicle essentially, but because I'm saying, I'm saying 2022 because it's based on the V-Cross, so 2022-2023 vehicle, it does not come with Type-C um, charging ports, so it uses the old um, Type-A, so something I'm not really a fan of, um, so in this day and age, almost all of our cables come with Type-C, but with regards to the interior, black, um, black head roof lining, then you get a good sound system, and decent enough, where you, I use the it lives around sound system, so it's good, it gets the job done, you feel like it's perfect, um, for me, it gets the job done, but because I've experienced a bit more, better sound system, I will knock it here and there, but in terms of the interior, that's just about it. There's not nothing much to speak about. Now moving on to the part I don't like about the vehicle, but a part that I kind of understand is with regards to the drive of the vehicle. And when I say the drive of the vehicle, obviously I'm talking about the the engine that the car comes with. So this car comes with a three liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine, the exact same one found in the V Cross. So it's producing 140 kilowatts and five and 450 newton meters of torque. So Comparison wise, I'd, I'd like to compare this car to the Raptor because of 
its off-road capabilities and its stance, just its overall look, right? And the Raptor is already a step ahead in terms of the engine. The Raptor is a 3-liter V6 petrol engine producing 90, um, 292 kilowatts and 5 something newton meters of torque. So already the Raptor is a step ahead. So one, one thing that I like that Ford did in the, with the Ranger series is that they made the Wildtrak and then they made the Raptor. Then they upped the power for the Raptor. And there's something that I wish I used had done the same for this AT, AT35. I wish that they'd upped the power. I'm not saying they could have opted for a petrol engine because ideally I also wouldn't want a petrol engine, but a very punchy diesel engine. A, a diesel engine that produces, let's just say, in, in and around 200 kilowatts and 600 newton meters of torque. Now you're in a different ball game. Um, now you're giving me a reason to go for this more than the, the V Cross, you know. It, besides the look of the vehicle, you've upped the engine. So I feel like they should have done something about that. And hopefully, if they are going to do a facelift of this vehicle, they do something about the power because I can't have the same power as a V Cross, you know. So sometimes you do want that, that kick of power. So, but how is the power? Honestly, when you're driving in and around town or anything like that, it's decent power even when you jump onto the highway when you're doing the speed limit it's decent power where you feel like you'll need more power is at times when you're overtaking it does not overtake as quick as you'd like it to but it'll get the job done so foot down now example and it's a nice it's a nice so this was very loud but the power it's okay um i think it's it's, it's a trial and tested engine so that's why isuz went with this engine um, but I just wish it had more power. In, in my personal opinion, I just, I just wish it had more power. It would have given it that, that stance. It would have been, been okay, Ford Ranger. I'm Ford Ranger Raptor. We see you, but we are also here and we're competing with, this, with, the, with, with you guys. And this car definitely competes with the Raptor. Just that the, 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 the power is what puts it down. But at the end of the day, um, my Susan knows what they're doing and I hope it's not going to bite them. Um, the fact that they didn't come with a different engine. So. That's just my thoughts with regards to uh, the power plant in this one. So the drive the vehicle, you sit quite high. Um, road imperfections, you don't feel them as much because of suspension and the size of the tires. But what you will hear, there's two things that you will hear. So the sound installation of the vehicle is not really that good. So you will hear the engine. So foot down. It goes. So you'll hear that because it's a very, because it's a very loud engine and it's but it's across all ICUs so you'll hear that one and as you're driving once you pick up speed you will hear the tires the 35 inch bf goodrich tires you will hear them but again when you have tires of this size of this magnitude you are bound to hear them whether you want or not so that's just my thoughts of this vehicle in terms of the drive and the actual look of the vehicle and interior look of the vehicle now time to speak about cost of ownership so how much does this car cost this car costs just above 1.1 million rand brand new and honestly is that a lot of money for the car you're getting right i honestly think it's perfect money they've priced it under in and around a normal the the ford ranger wild track and underneath the Ford Ranger Raptor. So they're putting you in a tight spot if you're looking to buy a bucky. And if you want to be unique and you want to be reliable and you, and you want reliability, this is something you should go for. And I will 100% definitely recommend this vehicle. So if you take the, the, the cost of this vehicle and you finance it over a period of five years, which is 60 months, at an interest rate of 12.25%, um, you are looking at paying 25,000 Rand. And that's with Change Cards recommending MFC, which is Net Bank Finance. You're looking at paying 25,000 25, Rand. And for a change, that 25,000 Rand is not a lot of money because you're getting a lot of car. So 25,000 Rand leaving your account every day, not every day, every month, it makes sense because all you have to do is look outside and see what the 25,000 Rand is giving you. And it's giving you this odd, odd uh, 1835. So i really do like this vehicle now to the question of would i buy this vehicle honestly i really really do like this vehicle and as much as it has its flaws for 1.1 for 1.1 million rand you're getting a lot of car but i personally would not buy it and that's essentially because of two things one the ranger raptor literally exists so, so that's one and something that the rain that the ranger raptor has over this is obviously one the power and two the overall comfortability of being in the vehicle so the Ranger Raptor is much more comfortable in the interior, being in the car. That's one. The second thing, obviously, is is the engine. So what would make me buy this at um, 1835 over the Ford Ranger Raptor? It's essentially those two things. If Isuzu can work on bringing a different engine, it doesn't have to be in and around the power of the Raptor or be a petrol engine. 
as long as they give you something in and around 200 kilowatts between 200 and 250 kilowatts for example in a diesel in diesel form 600 newton meters of torque and work on the comfortability of the vehicle right it shouldn't feel much of like a bucky then definitely i would definitely get this vehicle over the ranger raptor because when you're looking at it it does look good it does look good which one looks better with, between the Ranger Raptor and this AT35? I'm going to leave that question to you guys because I personally don't know because the car looks very good. But yeah, I've told you every single thing you need to know about this vehicle from the extra look of the vehicle, into look of the vehicle, cost of ownership and my overall thoughts of the vehicle and whether I would buy this vehicle and what it would take for me to buy this vehicle if I had the money. But I hope you guys did like the content. I am Sucha South Africa in proud, in proud collaboration with Change Cars. I'm Nikki Nash. And I'm signing out. I'll see you in the next one. No more bikes for now.